I mean, it, was, it wasn't a great weekend, was it? Um, here's my highlight package from the weekend. Begging you please don't go. And I said, Romeo, take me somewhere we can be alone. All together now, sweet, sweet. Caroline. Caroline. Oh, oh, oh. Times never seem so good. Green so green. good, so Sorry. good, so good. By now, you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about chess now. Genuinely, the best thing of the weekend was me playing guitar. Um, nothing, nothing went right for us in Football Manager. It was uh, pretty abysmal. At least it's a good job I didn't release a video saying this is how I'm going to win the streamer showdown, so at least I didn't do that. <laughs> The way to get better is to learn from your mistakes. So uh, I think it's time we took a bit of a dive into Football Manager and see where it all went wrong. So let's start off then with the team. What went wrong with the draft and the team selection? Well, for me, I still think I drafted a really good team. I think the, the starting 11 was a really good starting 11. I think the back line was the strongest back line in the whole competition. I think the issue comes is because I have drafted a team of individuals and not a team that is actually going to play well together. So the plan was to play this asymmetric 4-4-2 that works really well for me in the previous showdown. However, the issue is this team just doesn't fit this asymmetric 4-4-2 at all. Um, it really doesn't work. I'm happy with the back line. Like the back line are really solid, I believe. I'm really confident in them. It's then when you go further forward, you realize there's actually no protection for them in the midfield. I've got Richarlison quite far forward, but he's not going to provide anything to Vardy and Giroud because he, as a, as a natural player, wants to be looking to score goals more than provide goals, essentially. So that's quite a big issue with Richarlison already. So these guys aren't connecting very well. Lucas Moura on the wing was actually just very poor in general. He didn't really do much at all. We ended up dropping him for Shaqiri actually later on down the line. So he wasn't brilliant either. Alexander-Arnold potentially is committing too much with Mora, and as Mora as a winger and Arnold as a complete wing-back, they're both trying to do the same thing, like hug the byline, get the ball in the middle. They're, they're not complementing each other particularly well. And then we look at the centre of midfield in Tielemans and Fernandinho. Well, Tielemans is trying to get forward as that Mazala, so the only sort of defence the back line have is Fernandinho, and he's a box-to-boxer, and half the time he's in that box, obviously. So, really, this back line nothing works for them you know there was no protection for them they could be the best back line in the world but when they're up against lots of players and these guys aren't anywhere to be seen of course they're going to concede goals so whilst the team like individually are really really good like Fernandinho one of the best centre mids in the game Tielemans one of the best centre mids in the game Vardy one of the best strikers in the game none of them were connecting to each other so tactically I got it all wrong. I then moved to a 4-3-3 uh, afterwards, trying to just try and make things a little bit better. Um, but again, we have the same sort of issues. Obviously, Vardy would be that deep line playmaker in there, but we were just a bit too exposed. And I think by the time we'd lost that first few games, morale had dropped massively. We then switched up to a 4-3-3, but the 4-3-3 didn't really help us out much at all. In the same sort of scenario, Richarlison and Lucas Moura were not really providing, or Shakiri at this point anyway, but Richarlison and Shakiri weren't really doing enough providing. Obviously, Tielemans and Fernandini were swapped over, but again, the Mazala was kind of drifting into Richarlison's place a little bit, so not really creating anything there. They were getting in each other's way. Uh, Vardy obviously was feeding off scraps in that sort of scenario. And again, there just wasn't enough protection for the back line again. And in a similar sort of scenario, yes, the wing-backs of Robertson and Alexander-Arnold are complementing Mora and Richarlison better because these guys, as inverted wingers and inside forwards, are trying to cut inside and Robertson and Arnold try and go outside. It just wasn't really working. You know, and then we left the back line too exposed again. So really, tactically, I got it all wrong. Now, obviously, lots of things didn't go in our favour as well. There's plenty of things in Football Manager that you just can't control. It's out of your control. The game against James Alcott, for example, uh, we can't click on this because of the way Foot Manager works, but Sergio Ramos' own goal in the seventh minute. I'll get some clips up, obviously, of the goals too uh, to demonstrate this point. But like, how unlucky is this Sergio Ramos goal? Really frustrating. Vardy in this game also missed pretty much an open goal by cheaping the keeper but hitting the crossbar. 
And then right at the end, Cavani scores in the 95th minute because we go down to 10 men because Fernandinho got injured, stretched off the pitch. I'd made all my subs down to 10 men. And it's one of those things. So we were very unlucky not to get the win against James Alcott. Win that game and I think things could have been a little bit different. The game against Ben, Ben just destroyed us. He exploited the flaws in our formation. So he did really well in that game. Uh, FNG, we lost 2-1. But the two goals that FNG scored are probably two of the most ridiculous goals I've ever seen in Football Manager. And they're things that you just can't account for, right? You cannot account for the defensive mistakes in the lead to the first goal for Callum Wilson. And then Pulisic being allowed to run through everyone. Ramos tackling Pulisic into Trent, who just kicks the ball back into the path of Pulisic to just put it past our keeper. Like, you can't account for that. Well, exactly. Yeah, I'd have been very concerned to really and truly if it didn't end up on target. Go on, Christian. How we let them do this? How we let them do How we let them do Oh, for oh, God's sake. Oh, my goodness. Christian. You know, if those games against Allcott and FNG, we got the win instead of the draw and the loss... Our whole night would have been different, I think. Fox in the box then absolutely smashed us. He did really, really well all night with his strikerless tactics. I mean, after that point, I kind of just lost all sorts of motivation. And uh, I didn't really care. Didn't really care after that. So, um, quite frankly, losing these games was going to be expected. But I just didn't care at that point. So, obviously, after all of that, uh, we finished bottom of the table on four points. James Alcott also dragged into the elimination match on nine points. Uh, very, very close, actually, for the rest of the league table apart from us. But obviously at that point, I kind of gave up a little bit, which obviously isn't ideal, but you know, I gave up essentially. That put us into the elimination game against James Alcott, which we ended up winning. We beat James Alcott in the elimination match and uh, I had a different change of philosophy. Um, on the Saturday night, I was up until about three o'clock in the morning um, trying to just figure out a tactic with Viking Dan and Fox in the box. And it got to the point at three in the morning where I just thought, right, we've been trying for hours to try and build something and it's not really working. Lelujo, he's won five of these by playing 4-2-3-1 Gigan Press. So should I just do the same? I'll play 4-2-3-1 Gigan Press, see how it goes. And as you can see, we got the victory against James Alcott there in the golden goal. We have to go to extra time, and extra time means golden goal. Uh, Donny van der Beek got the goal in the 103rd minute to put us through into the quarterfinals against league winner FNG. So for the first leg, I thought, right, let's do the same thing. So for the first leg, I thought, let's do the same thing. 4-2-3 on Gigan Press. Let's see how it goes. And we absolutely dominated FNG. If I move this back up here a little bit, you can see the match stats down here. Uh, 16 shots to four shots, nine on target. Um, we hit the woodwork. It says zero times there, but I think we did hit the woodwork. We had three clear-cut chances. And of course, the big one, Sergio Ramos missed a penalty. Bruh. Casper, you've been massive today. Please do it again. Only if Ramos can score it, though. <clears throat> I thought I'd hit to Vardy. Oh, he's off the pitch, isn't he? So it's Ramos. Oh, yes, Casper. Oh, come on, get there again. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, I can't goodness believe me. If he'd scored that penalty, we would have been through into the semi-finals, and FNG wouldn't have won, and it would have been completely different. But you can also see here as well, Schmeichel on an 8.7 rating. Things you can't account for. Schmeichel had the tournament of his life he stopped so many clear-cut chances for us, so many one-on-ones. He was absolutely fantastic, and it was obviously one of those things. In the knockouts, we do home and away legs, and Football Manager gives a huge bonus to the home team for that home team advantage. So when we play away from home, you've got to go so defensively in tournaments like this. So for the defensive formation, I went to Old Reliable. I've used this in FM20, I've used it in FM21, and it always works pretty well away from home. There's a bit of a soak-up pressure and then counter-attack sort of style. So I was really confident going into the game playing with this style of play. The second leg, we drew it to 1-1. This time De Gea making a few more key saves. FNG was 17 shots to our seven shots. You can see the difference there in the home and away advantage. But we soaked up the pressure well. We played well. We got our goal nicely. We injured Christian Pulisic. Jamie Vardy got sent off as well, which didn't really help us out in the final 15 minutes or so. But of course, it ended 1-1. So it had to go straight to penalties. And in the past week... I have lost three penalty shootouts. One to Getafe in the Spanish Cup semi-finals, one to AC Milan in the Italian Cup final, once to avoiding relegation in the charity match. But now I've got a chance to redeem myself with a fourth penalty shootout in a week against FNG. Undo and now Vish Michael, come on. Oh, he's, he's put, put it, it wide. wide. It is literally sudden death as it yeah. stands already. Shakiri. Oh, he's hit the post. He's hit the woodwork, right. 
So yep, yeah, that's now four from four that I've lost, which is obviously not ideal at all. But uh, it's one of those things. Like I think if we'd beaten FNG, we could have had a really good run to the final. Um, I really backed myself on a Sunday. I draft my team a little bit with Sunday in mind as opposed to Saturday. All the players have got really strong mentals, which works really well in these sort of big game scenarios. Lots of these players will enjoy a big game. Like Sergio Ramos, for example, go to his report. It will stay on here somewhere. I don't think it does stay on there, actually. But look for the, the big game. Hey, there we go. Thrives on playing in big matches. The competitive atmosphere of the streamer showdown on a Sunday, I think they're all classed as big matches. So players like Ramos absolutely love it. Ronaldo came alive for me in season one because he loves big matches. That's the sort of player that I look for particularly when I'm drafting because it's a Sunday game. I want to win on the Sunday. So yes, there was a little bit of FM cheese in there, but uh, ultimately I drafted the wrong team, although they were very good individually, just not as a team and collective, they weren't particularly great. And also my tactics weren't quite right. So for next time I'm in a showdown, I've got a lot of work to do to tactically understand the game a bit better, but also be able to actually understand which players fit that system better so a lot of work to do and we could do a little series where tactically i focus quite heavily in the content that made no sense that sentence did it but uh, you know what i'm trying to say like we might do a series where i focus on tactics and actually try to get a bit better at the game rather than just sort of telling a story and narrative like we do in the lincoln loco 3. anyway that's going to bring today's video to its conclusion and uh, hopefully next time we're going to do a lot better in a streamer showdown if you have enjoyed today's video make sure you do drop a like on it for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and i will see you next time have a good one goodbye